This lesson is about conservation of energy. Conservation of energy is the idea that the total mechanical energy of a system remains constant. Energy doesn't appear out of nowhere, and energy doesn't disappear into nowhere. One form of energy can transform into another type, but the total amount of it always stays the same. Let's take a look at an easy example. Here's an object some distance above the ground, and in this position, it has a certain amount of potential energy. If we let go of it and it falls, as it falls, it's going to lose potential energy because its height is less. And as it loses potential energy, it's going to start gaining kinetic energy. The total amount of energy that this object has is the same every step of the way, but as it falls, the potential energy is transformed into the kinetic energy. First, we'll take a look at conservation of energy without including friction. It'll be a little bit easier this way. So without friction, we can say that the total mechanical energy of an object equals the sum of the potential energy and the kinetic energy. We can write this as ET equals PE plus KE. And remember, the total energy always remains constant. Let's take a look at a bigger example. This cannon is going to fire a cannonball straight up into the air. The cannonball has a mass of 7 kilograms, and when it leaves the cannon, it's traveling with a velocity of 42 meters per second. Up top, the cannonball is shown at its highest position. What I'd like us to figure out is the height that the cannonball reaches. Since we really don't know anything about the cannonball up at its highest point, let's focus on the location where we do know information about the cannonball. That's the bottom, right after it leaves the cannon. Let's write out the equation for the total energy of the cannonball just after it leaves the cannon. So we have ET equals PE plus KE. Well, the cannonball hasn't really risen yet. Let's say that the potential energy is zero. The kinetic energy would then be one half mv squared. If we substitute in the seven kilograms and the 42 meters per second, we find that the total energy of this cannonball is 6,174 joules. Okay, great, you might be thinking, but we weren't looking for the total energy of the cannonball, we're looking for the height of the cannonball. Well, you know what, hold your horses. If we know the total energy of the cannonball right after it's fired, then we know the total energy of the cannonball when it gets to its highest point. It's the same. That's conservation of energy. The total energy of the cannonball remains constant. If it was 6,174 joules when it was fired, it's always going to be 6,174 joules. In the beginning, all of that energy was in the form of kinetic. Well, how much kinetic energy do we have now? I hope you remember that at the highest point, the velocity is zero. This means we have no kinetic energy. Okay, how much potential energy do we have? Well, we don't know. Let's take a look at the equation for total energy. If we have 6,174 joules of total energy and we have zero kinetic energy, then all of the energy is in the form of potential. Now we can go ahead and calculate the height. If we know the potential energy is 6,174 joules and the equation for potential energy is mgh, we can substitute in our energy, mass, and the acceleration due to gravity and figure out that the height of this cannonball is 89.9 meters. This is just one of many different examples we could have looked at, and of course, we'll practice a lot more of them in class. Now let's look at what happens when we include friction in our conservation of energy situations. So let's start by making it clear, total mechanical energy is still going to be conserved. That is a law of nature. But now some of the energy is gonna transform into heat. We're going to call this internal energy. This is energy that is contained in the molecules of the object. We can now write out the same equation for total energy that you'll find on your reference table. ET equals PE plus KE plus Q. Q stands for internal energy. When work is done against friction, internal energy is produced. Here's that phrase, work done against friction, that we've seen before. Now let's take a look at a conservation of energy example with friction. Here we have a five kilogram mass at rest on a three meter tall incline. When we release it, 
it slides down to the bottom, reaching a final velocity of 6.2 meters per second. The question we want to answer is how much work is done against friction? When you see that phrase, you want to be thinking internal energy. This is our way of asking for how much internal energy is produced during this process. As we've done before, let's start at the beginning and figure out how much total energy this object had. So this is the sum of its potential, kinetic, and internal energy. Well, at the top it's at rest, so there's no kinetic energy. And since it hasn't moved yet, there hasn't been any friction, so there hasn't been a chance to produce any internal energy. At the top, there's only gravitational potential energy. If we substitute in the mass and the acceleration due to gravity and the height, we can find that this object at the beginning had a total energy of 147.15 joules. Now we can take a look at what's happening to this object at the bottom. Once again, we can start with our equation for total energy, PE plus KE plus Q. At the bottom, the object doesn't have any height anymore, and therefore the potential energy is zero. The kinetic energy can be calculated using the equation 1 fmv squared, and we have our Q term, our internal energy, that's what we're looking for. We can substitute in what we know. We know that this object is still going to have a total energy of 147.15 joules. We can substitute in the mass and the velocity. Whoops, that should be squared. And we can find that at the bottom, the kinetic energy is 96.1 joules. So this object started out with a little more than 147 joules of potential energy, but now at the bottom, it only has about 96 joules of kinetic energy. If we didn't know any better, it would seem as if some energy had been lost, but we know that friction produces heat, and so we can figure out that this process produced 51 joules of internal energy. This is the work done against friction. This is the amount of energy turned into heat during the process.